welcome to Embroidery 2. I'm going to talk today about uh, many of the so-called parts and pieces that we use to, for successful embroidery, stabilizers, threads, needles, that type of thing. I'm going to do this video in two parts. I will try to get through the main things, the stabilizers, the threads, and the, um, the needles first, and then we'll take a short break, and then I'll come back and finish up. Um, so, without further ado, let's get started. I wanted to start today by talking about stabilizers. Stabilizer, proper stabilizer can make or break um, successful, whether or not your embroidery is successful or not. And stabilizers are actually divided into three major categories. We have cutaway, stab or, I'm sorry, tearaway stabilizers, cutaway stabilizers, wash away stabilizers. There, now there's a fourth category that I will get into in a minute, but we'll start with the most common one, which is the tearaway. And we carry OESD stabilizers, and probably the most common one that you will be using is the Ultra Clean and Tear. And we have it here. Many of these come in different sizes for the larger hoops versus the smaller hoops. I tend to buy the larger ones um, and then cut them to the size I need, but if you have a project that this will work, then that's fine too. It's probably the first stabilizer that just about everybody buys. It's a medium weight stabilizer, works very well for many, many projects, <clears throat> tears away cleanly. Um, it's just a wonderful product and I do use it quite frequently. Now it's, um, you, you're gonna choose your stabilizer based on the number of stitches, not the fabric weight. So if you have something that's average stitch count um, this tends to work very, very well. It's the one I probably use more than anything. Tearaway stabilizers are used for woven fabrics. We'll use something else for knits. I'll talk about that later, but these are used for woven fabrics. And generally, you can hoop this along with your fabric in the hoop, and um, then when you're finished, pop it out and tear it away, and you're, you're done. So this is the Ultra Clean and Tear, which is the medium weight, and then we also have a lighter weight tear away, which would be for more open designs, um, designs with a few stitches. This works just fine. And then we also have a heavy weight tear away stabilizer for those designs that have a lot of stitches, thousands of stitches, and they're designs that are very, very dense. You need that heavier stabilizer to um, hold and support all of those stitches, so the heavy weight is the, the one to use for that. Now we've got a couple of special tearaway stabilizers. We have um, this particular one, it's new and ultra clean and tear plus. This one irons onto your fabric makes it a little bit easier to hoop. I've used it, I think, on one project, and I was pleased with it. So there's that one, and then it also comes in a larger size. And then we also have one called Hydro Stick, and this is one that you can moisten, you can hoop it. It's for projects that are difficult to hoop. You can um, hoop this, and then you can moisten the area that you want to embroider and then stick your project to it. Now you definitely want to use this with fabrics that it won't hurt it if they get wet. An example of a project that I used it on is this little sticky note um, holder. And so this was the um, hydra stick was hooped and then the machine stitched out a square here and we took a um, one of those inexpensive foam paint brushes that you can buy at the hardware store and just painted it with warm water and then stuck our piece of fabric onto the hoop onto that it held it very very well and then embroidered our design and then when we were done we actually left the stabilizer in this because we wanted it to be stiff and um, you can put your sticky notepad in there and fold it up and you have a nice little presentation for a pad of sticky notes. So those are the general, the most common um, tearaway stabilizers. Most companies do make one, but just remember the, uh, the weight 
is the most important thing, the number of stitches when you're choosing a, a tearaway stabilizer. If you can't get all the stabilizer out, do know that the um, as you launder the garment and wear it, the rest of the stabilizer generally dissipates and goes away. Um, but if you don't get it all out, it's really not the end of the world. No one sees it and it's, um, it's not a problem at all. So keep that in mind. The next category of stabilizer that we will be talking about is the cutaway. And again, we have a medium we have a he right here, medium weight. <clears throat> then we have a heavy weight. And this is kind of a, another medium or lighter weight poly mesh. Poly mesh is one that comes in three colors. It comes in black, beige, and white. And this is the kind of stabilizer that you want to use if you are um, embroidering on a knit. You can use Two, I've used up to three layers of this. Um, and cutaway stabilizers are such that um, they will actually stay in the garment after you are finished embroidering them. Knits are very flimsy, they're very stretchy. If you used a tearaway stabilizer on them, the minute you started to wear the garment, launder it, you, um, and I've seen this in purchase clothing where you'll launder the garment and then all of a sudden the embroidery design, which is nice and flat, gets very, very puckery and pulls. This also prevents puckering in knit fabrics because it does not, it's very strong, it does not tear away. You end up having to cut this away after you are finished. And unlike the tearaway stabilizer, the poly mesh or the um, cutaway stabilizers, their job is not done once the garment is embroidered. They are left there to support that embroidery for the length, the life of the garment. So if, as you're wearing it, as you're washing it, um, the stabilizer keeps it from puckering <coughs> and shrinking later on. Now, as I said, you can use two to three layers of this. That will give you kind of the same thing as the medium weight. I've never actually used the medium weight myself. I tend to stick with the, the poly mesh but um, you will definitely use this with a 505 spray, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, to adhere it to the garment, and you always, always, always want to hoop this with the fabric as one piece in the hoop. That, again, keeps it from puckering. Now, after you are finished embroidering, what you'll wanna do is take the garment out of the hoop, you will want to then um, turn it in upside down and trim, but you don't want to try to trim away every little bit of stabilizer. You'll leave about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch of stabilizer all around the outside of the garment. And again, as I said, that will um, <clears throat> keep the integrity of the embroidery while you um, continue to wear it and launder it. Okay. Now, this brings up a point that not everything, regardless of the stabilizer, not everything can be embroidered on every fabric. For example, you do not want to take a 30,000 stitch design and try to embroider that on a lightweight batiste. Not everything can be done. It just doesn't have the, even with the stabilizer, it doesn't have the weight it needs to um, support that fabric. So um, you'll need to keep that in mind when you're planning your embroidery projects. There are designs out there, I have one at home, waiting to just stitch out, and I think it's 40,000 stitches. There's no way I could ever sew that on a lighter weight fabric. I'm gonna to have to do it on something heavier. So um, keep that in mind when you're choosing your stabilizers, okay? Now the heavyweight stabilizers, the one thing about it is, um, I, that's why I tend to prefer to use two to three layers of this poly mesh. Um, the heavyweight stabilizers are very stiff and they're very heavy. So for example, if you use this on a, on a sweatshirt, maybe you're gonna put a monogram or something on a sweatshirt, you may find that after you're finished, um, it tends to just be so stiff that it's uncomfortable to wear or it um, just doesn't look very nice, it, it stands out. So again, I tend to prefer using three layers of a lighter weight one um, as opposed to one layer of the really, really, really heavy. It kind of depends again on what you're doing. 
Now, if you are going to embroider on white knit, you'll want to use the beige poly mesh. Um, if you use the white, you will see the, the circle around. With the beige, it's much less noticeable. So that's something also to keep in mind. Now we also have one here called a fusible poly mesh, and this is wonderful for shirts. Um, I love this for baby onesies when I've done those. It's very difficult to hoop a baby onesie. I do teach a hooping class. You might want to keep an uh, eye open for that if you're interested. But this is nice because you can turn the little onesie inside out and iron this on the back. And <clears throat> that way it, it, it holds it even better than the 505 spray, but you can get your hoop get the garment hooped and uh, get it straight and not have to worry about your stabilizer getting a wrinkle in it or coming un undone. Just makes it much easier. Now it adheres um, to the fabric, but it's not so much that you can't then, after you've finished embroidering the little onesie or the t-shirt or whatever, when you turn it inside out, you simply can take the edges and peel it back a bit and then trim all around the edge and um, that way it makes it much easier. Now there's also another stabilizer. I don't, well it's not really a stabilizer. I don't have any with me today, but it's called Gentle Touch and it's considered, um, it's not really a stabilizer, but it, um, on, especially on a newborn's things, if you're gonna do things for babies, um, this can be, even though it's fairly soft, it can be irritating to a baby's skin. So the Gentle Touch is a, it's almost like a fusible, very soft trico, and you can cut out a piece of that and iron that onto the back of the onesie over the stabilizer, and that makes it softer next to a baby's skin, or maybe for even an adult that has um, sensitive skin. You don't want that. Uh, the back of the embroidery can be a little bit um, rough because of all the stitching and everything back there, so that little gentle touch will um, serve as a as kind of a buffer between a baby's skin. I've also used it as a an iron-on lightweight stabilizer if you are, need stabilizer in a knit fabric so it works well for that as well. Okay so those are the cutaways. Now the last category is the washaways And we have several different varieties. We have aqua mesh, and these actually, after you, these are used for freestanding lace, for very, very lightweight, sheer embroideries, say something very lacy looking on a, on a batiste fabric. These work beautifully because they literally wash away when you're done. And again, the aqua mesh comes in a couple of different sizes. I have the short one here, and the, I think this is 10 inches, and this one's 15 inches. And then we also have one that's comparable, which is called Badge Master. And this, the land of a roll that we had left from a class we did, but this is very much like a very thick saran wrap, for lack of a better, or a very thick plastic. These both perform equally as well, but I tend to use the aqua mesh a little bit more because it's just easier to hoop. This is very, very, very stiff. This is not, this is like hooping, for all intents and purposes, it's like hooping a paper towel. And again, you can use more than one layer if you feel like you need extra protection um, when you're stitching these things out. But um, I tend to use this more than I use the Badge Master. Now Badge Master is nice on the back of something that you have to see. We do have embroideries, coasters for example, and you'll embroider the top and then you take the hoop off the machine, flip it upside down, and you have to put it back on. Well, when I've tried to do those with the aqua mesh, you just can't see quite well enough to get that back on. And my back would always be just a little bit crooked. So using the Badge Master, because it's clear and you can see through it, um, 
it makes it easier to place those types of things. We also, um, in another class workshop that I teach, we do some stitching on burlap, and this really works very, very well on burlap. It's hooped along with it, and it, um, again, you don't even really have to wash it away at the end. It's clear, and burlap is rather rough looking, so you can just cut away the excess and you're, you're done. So it works very well for that. It has its uses, but for just general freestanding lace, that type of thing, I do like this better just based on the fact that it is so much easier to hoop. And I've got a couple of samples here of designs. The shoes, um, I made these little lace motifs out of freestanding lace. When you use this, um, Aquamesh stabilizer, what you'll do is you'll hoop, simply hoop a layer or two of this in your hoop, and then you stitch the design on top of it, the lace or the, the um, lightweight design, whatever. And then after you're done, you cut away as much of it as you can around the edge, and then you just put this in a, like a pie plate or a, a baking dish with warm water and just let it sit and soak. And then after 15, 20 minutes or so, you just take it out you can rinse it. If you want the lace to be very soft, you, then you'll rinse it further. If you want it to be rather stiff, I make them at Christmas time the little uh, pretty snowflakes sometimes. I want those to be fairly stiff. So I'll just take those out of the warm water, blot them dry, and then let them dry naturally overnight, and then they're ready to go. Sometimes you may have to press them a little bit with a press cloth, but for the most part, they're, they're ready to go. And um, just the freestanding lace, it just makes it so much easier. You'd never be able to get a tearaway or a fabric off of this without um, using the wash away stabilizers. They work beautifully. Here's another example of a little building. OESD has this little village that you can embroider. Now this does have some fabric, but most of it is freestanding lace and it was all done with the stabilizer. And this is very stiff, so this was soaked just enough time to sort of get the visual part of the stabilizer gone, and then the rest of it was left in there so that it has a, a stiffness to it. Here's an example of some little sachets, and these were actually embroidered with a wing needle so there are little holes, if you can see them there. And definitely wanted to get rid of all the stabilizer in an instance like this. So again, used the aqua mesh, soaked them. Aqua mesh uh, stabilizer all disappears, so you can definitely see the holes afterwards. So a couple more examples. Okay. Um, OESD has a new topping. Um, many times I've used Sulky Salvi in the past. Um, every time you are going to be stitching on top of a napped fabric, say, um, for example, fleece or um, terry cloth towels, anytime you put a monogram on a towel, you definitely want to use some kind of a topping to prevent that stitching from sinking into the surface. <clears throat> it also prevents little bits of the terry cloth or the fleece or whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, from coming up and sh showing and kind of making your embroidery look messy. So this is OESD's newest topping. Um, the ones they had before tended to be a bit of a problem because they reacted with moisture. And so if you happen to use them on a rainy day or a damp day, oftentimes they would get sticky, they would get tacky, they would catch on the foot of your machine and cause a problem. Salvi never did that, and that's why I tended to use Salvi. But this new one, Stitch H2O, is um, an excellent, excellent topping. Now when you hoop something, many of the instructions will say to hoop a piece and fit this in the hoop. You really don't need to waste it on the whole entire hoop. I tend to cut it maybe an inch bigger all the way around from my design. Nowadays we have the basting function, so you can baste it into place, or you can use straight pins and pin it in the corners of your hoop. Um, just then use your check function on your machine to be sure that 
you're not going to hit it with your needle and, and foot of your machine. And then once it tacks it down, I tend to take the pins out and then just let the machine do the rest. Um, normally, you can just tear this away from your finished monogram towel or whatever you're doing. But if you tend to have a little bit left over, you can just take some warm water and a Q-tip or spritz it and um, get rid of the excess that way. I also have put the towel on my the surface of my ironing board and put a damp press cloth over top and just steamed it. And that moistens the um, topper, the stabilizer, topping enough that it sticks to the press cloth and I can just pull that off and the excess is gone. So you really don't have to worry about that. This is a backing that OESD has, an Aquafilm backing. I generally, if I'm going to use this, other than I kind of like the aqua mesh better, but if you were going to use this, I would use a couple of layers just to be sure that it's heavy enough to withstand the weight of your freestanding lace. Another thing I'll add too is if you are you see a design, a lacy design, make sure that it is labeled freestanding lace. If it's not, um, freestanding lace is digitized so that the stitches will interlock and it'll when you wash the stabilizer away it can stand on its own. If it is not a freestanding lace design, and oftentimes they'll be marked FSL, which stands for freestanding lace, um, if it's not marked that, uh, don't assume that it is, because I've seen it happen here, people will stitch them out, and then they wash the stabilizer away, and they're left with a mass of gunky thread. It just all falls apart, so do make sure that you are um, stitching out a, a design that's been digitized as such. Now we also have what we call sticky stabilizers, and this is Aqua Mesh Plus, which is a sticky wash away. We have Stable Stick Plus, or no, just Stable Stick Cut Away, and then we have Stable Stick Tear Away. And these are wonderful for embroidering items that maybe you can't hoop. Um, some towels, for example, are so heavy and thick um, if you try to hoop those, they tend to leave what we call hoop burn around the outside edge. Plus, your hoop doesn't always, isn't able to hold that much thickness, so it'll just pop off. Or maybe um, uh, you're going to hoop a, a bag, a tote bag, a heavy tote bag. You obviously can't hoop that. Um, ball caps are another thing if you want to embroider those. Um, pouches, little zipper pouches. You purchase them and you want to embroider those. Um, so you need to have something that's going to hold that for you. And this is basically a lot like contact paper. And what you do is you hoop this. Now again, if you're going to do this on a knit, you're going to want to use the cutaway version. On a um, woven, the tearaway will work fine. But you hoop this, there's a paper side and then there's a, um, like a soft side. You hoop it with the paper side up, and then you take uh, the tip of a, your scissors or the tip of a needle or a pin, and you score it from corner to corner, and then you peel off that paper, and it exposes a sticky surface. So you can stick your item down to that, and then embroider it, and then either cut or tear away the excess. But it will hold your item in place. Um, we've used this for coasters, for example, purchase coasters. You might want to put a monogram on them. So you can hoop this, stick the, the coaster to the um, machine, and then go ahead and, and embroider it. And it works very, very well. It it's, holds better than the 505 spray for something that heavy. I've done pouches, I've done you know, placemats, all kinds of things with this particular type of, um, of cutaway. Now, I did a ball cap um, a couple of years ago and I ended up using the cutaway because that really needed to be held securely and it wasn't going to be next to anyone's skin really as they wore it. So I like this. It's a little bit stronger than the, than the tearaway one, but they both work equally well. Now the 
Aqua Mesh Plus wash away. You wouldn't think something that feels like contact paper would wash away, but it, it indeed it does, and it washes away quite well. For example, these napkin corners, you are a, you, it, the machine stitches out an outline, and then you apply that, a placement line, I should say, for the where to place the napkin, and then you need to stick the napkin onto that spot. And because we want to wash all of this away, you can see that it's lacy, because we want to wash all this away, this stuff works perfectly. And again, you're going to soak it, or with, in the case of linens, you might want it softer, so then you would rinse it. Now, the way that you know with wash away stabilizers, the way that you know they're all gone, as you're rinsing them under warm running water, you'll find that they will be kind of sudsy. Um, bubbly. Once that disappears, you know that all that stabilizer is gone. So that's how you can tell if you've gotten rid of all of it. And at, at, in the past, we've had embroidery designs that would stitch out lace collars and cuffs, earrings, all kinds of things. And for those, you generally want it washed away so that the, the item is soft. So um, this works very, very, very well. And like I said, it's a little stiffer than the regular aqua mesh, but it hoops a little bit easier than some of the other ones. Here's another one. This is a little one that you put into a, for keeping rolls warm. And again, did the same kind of corner here, but used that sticky aqua mesh and it, aqua mesh plus, and it worked very well. Here are three others. The first one, it's in a red label. You'll notice that the cutaways have a red label, the tearaways have a purple label, and the blue, uh, the washaways have a blue label. This has a red label because it is a cutaway, but it's a fusible um, inter interfacing. And it's basically the same thing as Shape Flex, which you can purchase by the yard. But I do like this width. I used it to back the flap for this pillow, and it was just about the perfect width to back my fabric. I did make a couple more of these that were a little bit bigger, and I did like to use um, the iron-on but you can use this for interfacing, just like you do Shape Flex. It's, um, it's a really nice, lightweight, gives just enough um, added weight to your fabric so that you can um, maybe get a better embroidery. You use it in to back lightweight fabrics. This is Fuse and Fleece. It's a very, very thin fleece. So for example, if you were making placemats or something of that nature, making them from scratch, you could put this on the back. It can give you a trapunto look in your embroidery, but it's just a nice size to, to deal with. And it, it's lighter, it's not as thick. So for machine embroidery and trying to hoop it, it makes it much easier. And then this last one is called Heat to Go. Now you might have a, um, a project where you need to, um, kind of like a freestanding lace type of thing, or a border. Uh, years ago, I embroidered a um, silk scarf, and I did a pretty design along the edge. Well, I wasn't going to soak that silk scarf when I got finished, but I wanted to get rid of everything. This is a, a stabilizer that is designed to be removed with heat. So what you can do is put this on top and behind your embroidery do your em embroidered item and then you put a press cloth on it and you use um, like a cotton setting on your iron and what happens if, if this the one that I used was not this brand this was not available at that time but it turned the stabilizer kind of to a brownish ash looking um, powder and then I was just able to take it to the trash and brush it away and my item looked just fine and I didn't have to worry about getting any water on that silk scarf. So that's what this is. This is a stabilizer that is designed, topping, whatever, designed to um, 
be removed with heat so that you don't have to get any water involved. Okay, that's all I have on stabilizers. Um, there's much information also available on the OESD, Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. It's embroideryonline.com. You can go there and get information. We also have a wonderful new book in the store available. Um, we don't, we're out of them right now. We've got more on order. But it's called The Big Book of Embroidery, and it was written by one of Bernina's um, uh, educators. And she is an embroidery expert, and much of the information is in there as well. So be looking for that if you're interested um, when we get those back in stock. All right. If you have any questions about any of the stabilizers, you're welcome to call the store. We all embroider, and we'd all be happy to help you. By the same token, if you're planning to embroider something and you're not sure what stabilizer to use, not sure if you need topping, bring it in, and we will certainly talk you through it and get you on the right track and recommend what stabilizer or that you need to use. All right. The next thing I'm going to talk about are threads. And you do want to use embroidery threads for your um, embroidery projects. Embroidery threads are different from sewing threads because they tend to be softer. They're not as tightly twisted. Twisting the thread makes it stronger. Embroidery threads really don't have to be strong. They just have to look pretty. So these are not as tightly twisted. Now, embroidery threads come in different um, fibers. We, years ago, when I first got my first embroidery machine, the only thing we had was sulky rayon, and that's what we all used. Um, rayon, however, has its, its negatives. It's beautiful. Rayon is a fiber that takes color and dye just beautifully. Some of the colors cannot be matched um, when it comes to that, but rayon does have its issues. It tends to be a rather weak fiber. It's a cellulose fiber, so it's rather weak, and it also is not color fast. So if you were to embroider, say, a red Santa Claus on a white bib and wash it, the color would definitely run. So the advantage, um, those are some of the disadvantages of rayon. As, as I said, it looks very, very pretty. If you're going to put a, a design on a, a beautiful blouse and maybe you're going to wear it just out for the evening, doesn't need to be very strong, or maybe you're going to dry clean it, then that will be fine. And rayon has a beautiful sheen to it. But other than that, I would never put it on, say, children's clothing or hand towels, dish towels, that type of thing, because it's just not going to hold up. So we do have polyester. There are many brands of this available. We happen to carry Isocord. We like it very much. And um, comes in 375 colors, give or take. So um, you never have to worry about finding the right color. And thread is something that you just are going to have to add to as you embroider. I, I still seem to have to come in here and buy greens even though I have a whole box full of greens just to get the right the right color. Uh, but most embroidery thread is a 40 weight thread. That's what most designs are digitized for. We do have some that are digitized for heavier threads. Years ago we had some that were made to look like cruel work, hand embroidery, cruel work, and those used a heavier thread. I believe that was a 12 weight but those were digitized for that heavier thread. So if it doesn't say on it, generally it's digitized for a 40 weight thread. Now this is polyester, so it has the advantage of being both an embroidery, a pretty thread, and it's also strong. Um, on a rare occasion when I need a special color and I don't, can't get the metler, I will use this for construction because it is strong enough. We have customers who use it on their serger because again, it's polyester, so it's very strong, and again, it's color fast. So you can embroider red on white and not have to worry about it fading or um, looking worn after a while. Um, like I said, this is Isocord 40 weight, so that's what we recommend. Now we do have some specialty isocord threads that you might be interested in. We have a variegated, which is very, very pretty and easy to use. I just brought two back. I think there are at least 24, 26 colors out there. Here's a kind of a Christmassy red and green, and then we also, here's a blue and white variegated thread. They also make 
metallic threads. Now metallic threads in machine embroidery can be a real bear. I always said better embroider with metallic threads on a day when you're in a good mood because you can have problems. However, OESD has solved most of those problems because their metallic threads are polyester. They're around a polyester core. Um, Sulkies, I don't know if they still are because we don't carry them anymore, but sulky threads had a rayon core and when you get a weak fiber and then you put a metallic, which is rough around it, it was just an accident waiting to happen. But these do not. The only time I have ever had this break is if it got caught somewhere in the machine and it would break. But um, these embroider beautifully. This is what they use in the industry. They don't have time to mess with rayon, you know, problem type threads. So they use this in the industry. Um, it comes in the straight metallic, which is what I have here in several colors. Gold, silver, this happens to be a purple. But it comes in several colors. It comes in a twisted version. This is black and silver. It comes in many other colors, some with silver, some with gold. Um, this one makes incredible spider webs for Halloween. And then it also comes in a pearl essence. And you can kind of see here up close that that has a pearlish look to it. Um, this is what I use for my snowflakes. It's very, very pretty. And it just kind of gives a shimmer. They look so pretty on the tree. But um, the, you can use these. Nice thing about freestanding lace is you can generally kind of hoop up the stabilizer, start the machine. There aren't any jump threads. You can just sort of, I, I'd stay in the room with it, but you can do other things and not really have to worry about having to stop and change colors. So this is really, really pretty. Now many of the freestanding lace designs will say to um, put the same thing in the bobbin. I would not put this in the bobbin. I generally just use a white bobbin thread and the tension is offset enough that it pulls the stitches around at the back and you really don't even see um, the, the fact that the bobbin is plain. This is, is kind of rough and I just feel better having um, you know, smooth, finer thread in my bobbin and then I use this on top. Now another thread that I like to embroider with is the DMC cotton and it says it's a 50 weight thread, but I've used it many, many times. I've used a 30 weight cotton too, with a 40 weight design and not had any problems. But this is just has a softer look to it. And for example, on these napkin corners, this is something that I want to look vintagey, and this was the first one that I did here. And I use the isocord thread, and it, it, I love isocord, but this does have a sheen to it, which I'm not as fond of. Whereas this one is done with the DMC, and it has more of a matte finish to it. And I personally, I just like the the, the look of it better. Whatever you like is what you should use. But I've I've just wanted to say that I have used this for the embroidery and I'm very, very pleased with it. This is one that I do put matching thread in the bobbin when I embroider because you are gonna see the back of this and there would be a marked difference if I just put plain beige or white in the bobbin. So it's fine enough that I can use it in the bobbin as well. Now the other thing that I like to use the DMC thread with um, there are many designs out there for cross stitch that have been digitized. And if you use the shiny um, isocord thread, it really looks like it's done on the machine. If you use this, the cotton, it looks much more like it's been done by hand. Um, these are made by DMC, who makes the floss that we use to smock and do cross stitch with. So um, this is gonna give you that same look as if you had stitched it for hours by hand um, using the DMC floss. Uh, I have used this in my machine if I've done a smocked garment. Maybe I want to do a scallop trim on the sleeve or you know something of that nature. I can actually get this to match the floss that I use so it works out very well. You can use it for decorative machine stitching too. So it's a great thread. A lot of our quilters like it for quilting. So it's very, very popular. Now there are all kinds of specialty threads out there. This is one that is a, um, an iridescent, well, it's, um, what do I want to say? I, it's called flash. And, you know, road crews and things will wear those vests that light up when light 
gets on them and you can definitely see, well, that's what this does. And um, I did a pumpkin last year and I used the orange on it and when you put the light on it, it, it glows. Same, this is a blue. Um, we have a dog leash on the floor that Sharon made and she used it to stitch out um, Ohio State on it and use it to walk her dog and at, at night you can see the um, the iridescent, like if a car light flashes on it, you can see it. So it's iridescent thread. There are glow-in-the-dark threads. There are some that, um, they are, they're white when you stitch them onto the fabric and then you take them outside and they turn color in the sunlight. So there's all kinds of, uh, there's glow-in-the-dark threads, um, all kinds of interesting things that you can do with different types of threads. We don't carry all of them, but there are d many different ones out there. The last thing I want to talk about with regard to threads are bobbin threads. And you always want your bobbin thread to be a little bit lighter weight than your top thread. Bobbin threads tend to be, if your top thread is a 40 weight, your bobbin thread is going to be a 60 weight, um, 70 weight, I've seen some. There are even lighter ones out there that you can get, but the 60 weight tends to work very well. And we nowadays have a polyester bobbin thread Again, this is the same company, OESD, Isocord company makes it, and this will work. Most people, the only bobbin thread you ever need are white and black. If you are going to monogram, for example, a navy blue or a black golf towel, you don't want to flip it over and see white bobbin thread. So you use the black for your darker embroideries. Most of the time, I just use white. And when I wind a bobbin, I tend to wind three or four of them. So they don't have to stop and wind a bobbin in the middle of an embroidery. I can just pop the empty one out, put the new, next one in, and keep going. So you'll wanna invest in some of this, and it's pretty much a lifetime supply. This is gonna last you, unless you embroider every day, this is gonna last you a very, very, very long time. Now, if you happen to have just some white cotton metler at home, that will work. That's what I used for years. This is a 60 weight cotton thread, works just fine for, um, for the bobbin. The only disadvantage to it is, is because it's cotton, it generates a lot of lint. And when you are doing machine embroidery, your machine is stitching constantly. So you definitely um, will get more lint with this, but it will work in a pinch and I, I've used it many times. Now for the people who have the older machines, um, the 200, the 730 that use the rotary hook, these work very, very well. A rotary hook is smaller, it doesn't hold as much thread, and sometimes when you're embroidering, you tend to run out of thread pretty quickly. So these have about three times as much thread as what you can wind onto a bobbin. They're a polyester thread, they're all ready to go, you just buy them, pop them in your machine, and they work beautifully. Now, Bernina has stated that they don't recommend pre-wound bobbins, any of them, and they can't guarantee that the machine will work with them. That's because there are many different companies that make pre-wound bobbins and not all will fit all machines. We have done the homework, however, and we know that these will fit the, um, the Bernina um, rotary hook bobbins, so these are okay to use but don't just buy them on Amazon or buy them anywhere because they may or may not fit. These will not work in the new five, seven, and eight series machines at all. They only work in the older um, rotary hook machines, the 640, 200, 180, and the um, 730. So they won't fit on all machines. All right. And here again, if you are um, going to do a project, please feel free to come in and ask us. We'll be glad to help you choose threads and give you some pointers on how to use different threads. The next thing I wanna talk about are needles. And you do want to use embroidery needles for your projects. These are Oregon needles. We also have some Schmetz needles. Um, Bernina has an assortment of embroidery needles that you can purchase. They come in this little plastic case. But I tend to use the organ needles. And until a few years ago, I just mainly used 
the regular ones. Um, unlike sewing, where you can use a universal needle for both wovens and knits, you know, as a universal needle, it's kind of a cross between a sharp, it's a slightly dull sharp, it's a slightly sharp ballpoint, um, and for most day-to-day -day sewing, they're fine. However, they are not really recommended for embroidery. When you think about it, you might have 10,000 stitches in a small area. And if you are using a universal needle, you will not get a nice penetration by that needle. And your embroidery may not look as neat and nice. You can tend to get loops. Um, so we don't recommend that you use universal needles for embroidery. Instead, we have ballpoint needles and we have sharp needles. So if you are embroidering on a woven fabric, you're going to want to use a sharp. If you are embroidering on a knit, you want to use a ballpoint. And again, they come in different sizes. This is an 80 ballpoint here, and this is a 75 sharp. Um, they come 70, 75, 80, 90, I believe, for the embroidery needles. Now we also have the same thing in the titanium, and they, you notice that right up here they say titanium on them. And these are what they use in the industry because they last so much longer. When you have an embroidery business, you don't have time to run around every three or four hours and change your needles. These are gonna last much, much, much longer, more than twice what these are. And I always said, oh, you know, these are fine. I don't do production embroidery. Um, I just do one or two things at a time, and so I use these and they're fine. Well, then I was doing a, developing a workshop sewing um, leather and neoprene and straw placemats and that type of thing. And I found that after just one or two embroideries, these would break, the, the regular ones would break, they would get dull faster. So after replacing my third needle, I went ahead and used a titanium and I was able to finish all my other projects with the needle and it suddenly dawned on me, gosh, when was the last time I changed my needle? So um, I, I highly, highly recommend these. In fact, I think they're actually a better buy. The regular ones are $9 for 10 needles, whereas the titanium ones are $16.70 for 10 needles, but they last so much longer in my mind they're just a better buy, and especially if you're going to embroider on something rather rough, like leather or vinyl or you know any of those types of things. Um, oil cloth, it's a little bit harder on the needle. These are definitely worth the investment. So these will work fine, these will work fine, but they do not last quite as long as the titanium ones do. I'm, I'm a real fan. The other thing I found too, and I didn't mention this when I talked about the sticky stabilizers, always before when I would use the regular needles and you're sewing with a sticky stabilizer, you find that the needle gums up fairly quickly. And so you have to, I would have those little alcohol wipes. I keep a box of those in my sewing room and after every other color, every two colors, I would stop and wipe down the needle with one of those um, little alcohol wipes. And I, the first time I used the sticky stabilizer and used the titanium needle, I did a couple of colors and I thought, oh, I need to wipe that needle down. And I felt it and there was no gumminess on it. So the titaniums resist that as well. So again, so many things I like about these needles. I've become a real fan. Now that said, we do have other needles that you may need to use for special projects. First one being metallic threads. Um, metallic threads, I love the isocord, but um, with other types you definitely want to use, I would say always use a metallic needle. We have them, this is, these are 70s. We do have some out on the floor that are 80s that are a little bit bigger. The nice thing about embroidery needles in general is what they, they have a larger eye in them. So a size 70 needle will have say an 80 size eye in it. So the eye is a little bit larger allowing that thread to go back and forth through the needle as you stitch. Um, metallic needles take it one step further. Not only do they have a larger eye, but they're also Teflon coated. So it makes the needle have a smoother surface for that rough thread to go through. So I highly, highly recommend that you do use the metallic needles 
um, when you are sewing with um, metallic threads. I have jeans needles here. Again, they come in different sizes. And the size of the needle you want to use will also depend, just like if you're sewing a garment. If you are putting um, something on a lightweight knit t-shirt, then you're probably going to want to use a 70 or a 75. If you're putting it on a sweatshirt, you're probably going to want to use an 80 or a 90. So match your needle to the type of fabric that you use, just like you do when you sew. If you are going to embroider jeans, um, again, we have a, a, here's a size 90. They come in different sizes again. They're, they're made for sewing jeans, so for embroidery, they work very well. Um, I have some Schmetz gold embroidery ones. These must have a coating on them. I don't know that they're titanium. They don't say that, but those will work. Um, I have a top stitch needle in a couple of different sizes, 80, 90. So again, for heavier fabrics, those would work. So there are many, many, many different scenarios. Um, now, one thing that has recently come to light, and I've never done this, so I'm just telling you what I've heard. Um, stretch, there, stretch woven fabrics are becoming more and more popular. And we have the stretch denims. And I had read somewhere recently where if you're going to embroider on a stretch, it's got spandex or lycra in it to make that woven fabric stretchy, they recommended using a ballpoint needle for that, or even a stretch needle, which um, is used for lycras and that type of thing. So um, just keep that in mind. I have not tried it personally, but that's what I had read recently. We are going to take a little break right now, and so I will go ahead and turn off, and I will be back in a minute. Um, you can join me in a bit.